like the president, I believe such a journey is possible in my lifetime. But what I know today is that we have an amazing engineering resource in space right now, the International Space Station. And we're moving out on the innovation and technological breakthroughs that are required to get us to our neighboring planet. I look forward to hearing what all of you have to say about humankind's next big adventure. And I thank you for the opportunity of addressing you today. Thank you very much. I am told that it is okay to take some questions. Chris says that's okay. So I will try to do that. We have some time. Okay, we have a microphone that's going around. Yes, Rick Lopez with NOPAC TV. Um, in a recent hearing held by the subcommittee on science and tech, um, a lot of the congressmen had expressed that uh, this so-called transition from consolation to commercial uh, was not very clear. Um, and in fact, looked to me, it seemed more like a shutdown of our manned space program than a transition. And also Dr. Scott Pace, who <clears throat> works at the GW had also expressed in his written testimony that, that the transition was inadequate and incomplete. Um, how do you respond to that? And also, how can we take our exploration capability seriously when we don't have anything to replace the shuttle thus far? Thank you. Rick, Rick I think I, my, my response would be uh, nothing is farther from the truth when, when people say that we're shutting down human spaceflight or the human spaceflight program. Uh, human spaceflight is still as vibrant as it, as it has ever been. Uh, we have been transporting both American and international crew members to the International Space Station using the Soyuz spacecraft uh, dominantly, as a matter of fact, since the Columbia accident in 2003. And some of you will remember back that it was following the Columbia accident that the decision was made that we needed to move on and, and that the United States needed to, be, to get back to uh, the business of exploration, going beyond low Earth orbit. Operations in low Earth orbit is critical. The International Space Station as I said, is our anchor for human exploration. But we as a nation, if we want to continue to say that we are the leaders uh, of spacefaring nations, we have to be able to reach beyond low Earth orbit, and that's what we're about doing. Um, it, it, there is no question that uh, the dream of the vision for space exploration, which would have had us about flying another vehicle within the next year, had it been funded appropriately and had it been carried out adequately, but that did not happen. And that's water under the bridge. And we can debate that forever and ever and ever, but that's all history. Uh, where we are today is where we are today. And what we are doing is we're on the cusp of, of actually realizing what I think uh, is a viable, uh, viable commercial capability of gaining access to low Earth orbit. Uh, the question of cargo to orbit um, is moot. I, I don't think, there, I hope there is no one who will argue with the fact that uh, the commercial entities that are on the horizon today uh, will be more than adequate to deliver cargo to the International Space Station. The challenge is crew, is commercial crew. And that challenge is because whether I'm doing it or whether commercial entities are doing it, getting humans to space is difficult. Uh, you know, we just need to understand that. Uh, we are working diligently with our commercial partners, industry partners, I, I don't like using the term commercial, uh, there, there are industry partners, and in many cases, there are the same industry partners that we've been working with for 50 years. So we're working diligently with them <coughs> to enable them to, to generate what, what I think will be called a, considered a commercial space industry. And that's not just launch vehicles. It's destinations in low Earth orbit. It's, uh, it is other outposts, whether they be inflatable modules or whether they be commercial space stations. Um, I, I always like to refer people back to a time that most is much too early for most of you. Uh, and it's back when I became an astronaut in 1980, when there was still a space transportation system. And it was a three-pronged system that consisted of a space shuttle, an orbital maneuvering vehicle, an orbiting space station, or stations. The orbiting maneuvering vehicle's purpose was to go from station to station, uh, from station to the moon, from station to other places. And in that time, 1980s, late 1970s, uh, early 1980s, we actually envisioned uh, privatizing the shuttle. Um, that did not work out, and, and it was brought to an abrupt end with the Challenger accident, to be quite honest. So uh, 
Um, we have an incredible opportunity to turn the clock back. Uh, this nation envisioned doing what President Obama has us trying to do today. We envisioned doing that in the 70s. Uh, and we were actually making headway to doing that in the 70s. Uh, it requires a lot of effort, a lot of sweat, a lot of risk, a lot of sacrifice, and yes, a lot of loss along the way. And so any of you who, uh, who think you're in this for the long run, uh, you need to get ready. You know, we will lose people. Uh, and when that happens, we cannot give up. Uh, great nations don't give up just because they encounter adversity. So I, I would plead with you in this forum, I, I don't know whether there's a session that will talk about risk at all, but it's something that needs to be on our tongues and on our lips every single day if we are true explorers. Uh, how many people left uh, you know, the east coast of the United States just trying to cross the Mississippi and never made it? Or how many people tried to cross the great, you know, the continental divide and never made it? Uh, we would not be the nation we are today were it not for true, true explorers, people who realize that exploring requires risk and loss. So uh, I think we're, I think we're okay. Maybe one of them? Yeah, a couple more. Okay, a couple more. Plenty of time. All right. <laughs> well, maybe not. Yes. General Golden, uh, Ed Hodgson, the Hamilton Sun Star. A question for you that has uh, a, a, a personal perspective as, as well as a, I'll say a, an institutional perspective. We, when we look at missions to Mars, ultimately are looking at the extension of human time in space. horizon that, that we're really familiar with. What's your view of our readiness to extend a human stay on the station to more than a year? And would you personally take that risk if, with our present state of knowledge? Um, would I personally take that? I would personally take that risk in a heartbeat. And some of you have heard me say this before. <laughs> I am married. <laughs> and I love my wife. And I want to stay married. So while I would personally accept that risk, I'm not sure what she would say when we had that con I don't know. We have not had that conversation. No one has offered me that opportunity. You know, John Charles, I, I, there are a lot of you with whom I've worked before. John Charles and I have worked years ago at the Johnson Space Center. And John may have an opinion about this. I think um, in terms of the human capability of living on station for more than six months, I, I think we're there. Um, you know, I trained with Vladimir Titov, who, um, although I, he flew a year later, Vladimir at one time held the world record for long duration space flight at 366 days. And, and we have had someone live in space for the duration of what we expect to be the time to go to Mars and return. So that's been demonstrated. And Vladimir walks around today, as far as we know, not significantly, um, you know, harmed by that experience. Do we have to rehabilitate individuals when they come back? Yes, we do. We have to rehabilitate individuals when they come back from a flight on the space shuttle of 12 days. Uh, the rehabilitation gets longer when someone's exposed to microgravity for longer periods of time. But we're confident that in terms of, of, of rehabilitation, uh, conditioning on you know, in orbit, we think we've got that. The, the big challenge, and some of you can challenge me on the big challenge, but I still think the big challenge is radiation. And, uh, you know, that's the, that is what we have got to come to grips with. We've got to figure out how we understand the threat. Um, you know, we've got to do some testing. There, there are lots of things that we have to do that remain challenges. There. But I, I, think, I think if we decided to do it, we could, we could keep people on the International Space Station uh, for very prolonged periods of time. We could stretch it out to, if we wanted to do a 500-day mission or something, if we wanted to do that. We just haven't gotten there. General Bolton, this is Daniel Sane, American Patent Agency. I have a question for you. You suggested that um, the approach to Mars is by an international, an international uh, approach um, with the way the ISS has been done. My question is, um, can you give reasons why you think this is the most appropriate way to um, go to, to Mars as opposed to NASA?